Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. We're working on a cavalry saber. We forged it out yesterday. It is about twice as thick as it's gonna be, over twice as heavy as the final piece, all done with the guard, with the handle, with it all. But that's good, because we wanna use the thickness of this piece to support it while we harden and heat treat it, which is on the books for today. What is the first thing that we're gonna get started with today, Will? So the first thing that we gotta do is we gotta tweak this tang a little bit. Right now, it follows the curve of the sword, and that's not good. We do not want a cavalry uh, cavalry katana. No, we, we don't. a cavalry saber. Exactly, so that tang needs to come this way a little bit. Uh, so that's the first thing, it's just a minor adjustment. After that, we're gonna get all of the forge scale ground off of this thing and uh, profiled up nicely, get it nice and smooth, so that hopefully we don't get any cracks or any weird dips that can cause warps and stuff like that. So we're gonna get it as smooth and even as possible before we do the quench. Exactly, and because you can't straighten anything unless you have some flat sides to work off of. Exactly. And so that's gonna be part of the idea. Obviously no surface grinder, but you know, flat sides, it's gonna help us straighten it if it does get any warps after our heat treat. While he is working on that, I need to get some steel so that we have a tube to quench in. It's important. Because we don't have a quench tube. That's all part of the fun of setting up a new shop. Thank you guys so much for joining us. He's gonna start grinding. I'm gonna go run some errands. I'm back from the errands and I got some steel. Will has done a couple hours of grinding on this thing. And uh, how much weight did you take off? Uh, a full pound, actually. And uh, <laughs> it really wasn't that much grinding. Like, there's still a couple spots where, like, just got below the forge scale on it. So, didn't feel like a whole lot. A couple wonky spots outlined in Sharpie here that need to be unwonkified. Got to unwonkify that stuff. And I guess that's the plan right now is unwonkify it, then ready for the heat treat. I've got cube. So while you unwonkify it, I can weld ourselves up a little heat treat tank Perfect. and uh, get started on that. Great. So Will has done a fantastic job of grinding this blade ready for heat treat. There are no bevels, there's no fuller. It is just beautifully straight and flat. It's uh, it's gonna be a good, good piece to go into the heat treat with. Mm -hmm. You know, we're starting strong on that. I, in the meanwhile, got this here quench tube made up and uh, hopefully it's the right length. Yep, that'll work just fine. It's a four inch square and uh, I have legs coming out in a triangle so that it's kind of supported by a tripod as opposed to being supported by just a flat plate. So hopefully this is much more stable. It also means that in the future we can put casters on it so we can wheel it around the workshop. With that all ready, time for us to make a fire to harden this thing. Woo! Okay, it was recording. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm good, I'm completely fine. Whoa. So Will is filling up the quench tank with some Parks 50 oil. One of the things that Colin has been working on over the last few days has been our new Heat Treat Oven 2000 right here. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna be doing the heat treat out here. One thing to note with this is this is built out of KO wool and KO wool isn't something that you want to be messing around with when the fibers can get around your workshop and when you can breathe the fibers in. It's gonna be fine just sat like that, but as soon as we start blowing hot air into it, the fibers can get up and they can be quite unhealthy for your lungs. The concept is blade goes in this side, burner goes in this side, it gets hot and we're gonna be able to heat up that blade for a good three normalizing cycles and a quench. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna use the same furnace to temper it. More on that later. So you know what it looks like on the inside? There we go, it's just a roll of insulating ceramic wool with wires inside it for us to suspend the blade. Will is over there with the propane torch and ready. So it is on at the bottle. We have it set, so there's gonna be very little oxygen flowing. You ready, Will? Yeah. Here yeah. we go. Is yeah. it lit? Yeah. Woo! More air. Got it? Let's put some lit paper inside it. We got some lit paper in it. Okay. Is everybody out of the way? Yeah. Here we go, and it's lit. We're off to the races. Didn't take long, it's already getting up some heat. 1440 degrees, 780 degrees Celsius. It's been a little more time and have a look at that. It is looking just fantastic in there. Beautiful even heat. Thank you so much for teaching us that, Colin. That looks brilliant. We're now rocking at 1680 degrees Fahrenheit, 919 degrees Celsius. This is it, we are ready for normalizing cycle number one. Will is gonna put it into the furnace. We have a beautiful even heat. He's just gonna line it up with some little small wires, let it hang, and let us get a nice even heat for cycle number one. going on right now is Colin is about to quench a knife that he's been working on. We've got our sword ready to quench. We're going to wait to do that until tomorrow because we want to temper it pretty much right away. Uh, so we'll have all day tomorrow to get that sorted out. As you can probably tell from the lights, it's getting pretty late here. And so, as Will said, it's going to make a little more sense to temper this tomorrow. But that's alright because with the magic of editing, I'm going to see you tomorrow right now. It is the next day. Yesterday evening, as I'm grocery shopping, I get a call from Will telling me that, Alec, I have solved our worries of how we're going to temper this thing. I've got an awesome idea. Do you want to run them through the idea? Sure thing. So I was talking to my, my bladesmithing mentor last night, Salem Straub, and he, we were talking about the issues that we were going to have with tempering and how we were going to do it. He's like, well, why don't you just do what I did? And I was like, what's that? And he basically took two he took propane ovens, but it would work with other kinds of ovens, and he just cut the sides out of them and slapped them now, together. Now, when we say oven, we mean, like, oven oven. Toaster oven. Normal cooking oven. Yep. Not a microwave. That wouldn't work. <laughs> um, so he just took two ovens and he just slapped them together, and that gave him enough width to do all kinds of, he tempers all kinds of swords in there. So we're going to run to Walmart, and we're going to pick ourselves up three toaster ovens and we're going to cut the sides out of them and we're going to slap them together and we're going to temper our sword in there. Don't do this at home, but uh, hopefully it works and we're going to temper this sword in three toaster ovens. <laughs> Let's go to Walmart. inside of this thing. We've got heating elements on the top and on the bottom, so that might be an issue, but we'll, we'll figure it out. The trouble that we're gonna have to worry about is the plan is cutting a slot, a little, uh, little opening at either end of this thing, something like that. But uh, more rectangular. More like this, so that we can stack these up next to each other uh, and put that sword in to heat it up. Again, this is ridiculously dangerous and a very short-term solution um, that's going to be supervised at all times. Wouldn't recommend doing anything like this. Neither would the manufacturers because they have triangle head screws. Triangle head. That's going to be difficult to take apart, but maybe we have triangle head screws. Would you look at that? One triangle head what? bit. And that fits? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We're going to town on this thing. So you don't think we even need to take it oh, apart? Oh no, I can see the wires. We're fine. Where are they? We don't need to take it apart. They're like right here. There we go. Much more reasonable to do now. See how fast that went? I think this is how we cut out the hole. Oh yeah. I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna die grind it. The nice thing about this is we're not really messing up the wires too bad. Exactly. So I was over here while Will was die grinding that. I pulled this spring up over this thing, and as it went up, I think I just 
forced my finger against this bolt, maybe, and, uh, and I uh, got a pretty nice looking cut right there. So Will's gonna keep cracking on and I'm gonna fix this. Make sure that the uh, we didn't break the oven. We might be shorting something here. Oh, I have a guess. So Alec put a spring on two different connections in there, and I think it might be shorting itself out doing that. So I'm just gonna unhook that little spring. There we go. And now I think it's gonna work. Let's give this a shot. And it turned on. I'm back from fixing up my finger. Thank you, Malcolm from Prometheus Medical, for the tip on using super glue and string to fix your finger. Here are a couple of clips of that. And so I am back with a super glue stitched up finger. And this looks awesome. This is the first time I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And you have said that the sword is. It's in there. The sword is in there. I'm doing its thing. <laughs> that is. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So we've got a heat treating oven. Again, don't do this at home. This is ridiculously stupid and dangerous. The good thing is, with this, we can fire up our furnace, heat the blade up, quench the blade, and then begin our tempering cycles. Exactly. Let's get it. Let's do it. Yeah. What temperature are we going to be going to here on the quench? About 1475, I think. 1,475 degrees freedom height. Get your t-shirt at alexsteelshop.com. We're gonna come out. It's probably gonna look a little bit cold just because of how light it is here. It's gonna be passed from one person who takes it out to another person stood here on the step ladder into the oil. Once it gets cooled, quenched. It's hard. There's still just about a minute for us to be able to straighten out any bends, which is gonna happen here at the vise. And that's gonna be how we harden the blade. It's then onto tempering to take that hard, hard blade and give it some toughness. The ability to be flexible without breaking, very important, especially in what we're making, which is gonna be a very, very thin blade with a hopefully very keen and strong edge. So what do you reckon, Will? We got a pretty, pretty good chance that we got a very nice blade. Oh yeah, huh? it all went well. Quench went well. We got it out of the forge. It was just a beautiful, beautiful heat. Yeah. This thing worked really, really well. We got it locked in the vise, and it is pretty straight, which is always a worry when you make these things because they like to wobble around in the hardening. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a very nice sword. The proof of the pudding is gonna be if this thing is hard. So we'll circle back in just a second to let you know. The proof of the pudding? Never heard proof of the pudding. No, how do you prove the... You prove the pudding with a chainsaw file to see how hard something is. Why would you... Who, it's an English blacksmithing term, proving who, the pudding. Who wouldn't believe that it was pudding? You're like, oh, this is pudding. You're like, no it's not, <laughs> prove it. This, you, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been a second. Do you wanna do the honors, Will? Sure it's cooled thing. down, we now need to see, is it hard? It's the sound that's gonna tell us about the most. So the, there is some decarb on the blade. It What's that? that? It means that carbon has left the steel uh, because it was so hot, basically. Very, so very basic. There might be a very thin layer of material that that's has it. less carbon and is less hard. Exactly. Okay. So, what do you reckon? Once we've got through that decarb, it seems pretty hard to me. Let's grind on it first. Ground the edge in a little bit. Oh, 
That's not hard. That's not good. Oh my goodness. No, I mean this is this is we need to we need to redo this. We need to go back outside and we need to go harder with it. And we need to go hard in this. Oh, this is just part of the fun of the Alex Steel YouTube channel. A little bit of a little bit of failure, steel not working, things breaking, things not hardening. What what do you reckon? What's the plan? We're go a little bit hotter with it would be my guess. So, translation, we're going to go a little bit hotter with it and that is Will's guess. Sorry, the mask. Yeah, it's not. It's not. One, two, three, ten. The tank can be, the tank is a little bit wonky, but that's something that we can heat up and, and move around. Yeah, we can also grind the shoulders in farther. We've still got two or three extra inches on here. But other than that, it looks pretty dang good. And for the second time today, we're gonna circle back and see if it's hard in just a second. And here we are again, round two. I, it looks a lot better this time. We got a better color on the blade. Now, what, uh, what do you mean when you say better color on the blade? So this like light gray with the dark gray. Am I right in thinking that light gray is often indicative that martensite has been formed? Exactly. This has hard. Exactly. So there we go. That. That is skating. That is exactly what we want. The file, which is hard, is not biting into the material. So we can now take our horribly dangerous ovens here, put the sword in, and move that a little bit farther away. And cook this puppy at what? What are we gonna do, Will? 425 for two two-hour cycles, and we'll take it out and let it cool in between. Outstanding, and that is 425 what? Freedom height. Which is that about, sorry, I was about to give the conversion. Anyway, you can get the merch at alexsealshop.com if you wanted to know. 425 degrees freedom height is right about 190, no, 210? 418 degrees Celsius, 425 freedom height. Two cycles, two hours. This is gonna be it for this episode, so I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go grab yourself a Freedom Hike shirt at alexsteelshop.com or throw back to some OG merch. Absolutely, this is a this is a cool shirt. I like the Forged Steel shirt. Yeah. It's a pretty epic one. Or grab yourself an It's Not Stupid If It Works shirt, which really doesn't make sense because it's still stupid, even if it's a stupid thing that's working. Just like this whole thing we've got going on. This is not stupid if it works, Alex. No, I mean, there's stupidity no, no, in the no, safety. No, 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 no. This working. is not stupid. This is cool and it works. You know what's not stupid though, Will? For you guys to go grab yourself some merch. AlexTealShop.com. Thank you guys for watching. It's been an ordeal. It's been a stressful day. Uh, it's been an emotional day getting this sword hard, but we're looking forward to seeing you on the next episode very soon. Pleasure as always. Bye-bye.